Lisa suffers from a neurogenetic developmental disorder called Williams syndrome. It's a rare disease that affects about 1 in 20,000 people. Scientists know that people with Williams are missing one of two sets of genes on chromosome 7. The result is a lack of motor skills, a distinctive set of facial features like high cheekbones and turned up noses, and a low IQ. But what piques some scientists' interest is the fact that language and musical abilities are spared in people with Williams syndrome. There's an interesting um, lesson for us here to learn as scientists about the way the brain is wired up and the way the mind works and the relationship between mind and brain and genes. And with Williams syndrome, we have the first opportunity to really trace uh, the path and make the links between uh, how the genes influence the development of the brain and how the brain influences the mind. Professor Dan Levitin is uniquely qualified to study Williams syndrome. He's an assistant professor in psychology and an associate member of the music faculty at McGill University in Montreal. He spent several years in the recording industry in Los Angeles and for the last 10 years has incorporated his musical expertise into his work with neuropsychology. Part of that research is devoted to getting a better picture of the Williams syndrome brain. It's, they're not able to instruct it to do very important things like feeding themselves or you know, buttoning a sweater, hanging a sweater on a hanger. Let's talk. Is it finished? Yeah. Yeah? Does it look like the other one? <laughs> no. You want to try again? Dan's work with Lisa is trying to gain a better understanding of those contradictions. When I say, I'll say start and then put it there for exactly one second and then take it away. Okay, not yet. Ready? Ready. Go. Great. And how many hours are there in the day? Do you know? No. Uh, how long does it watch, take to watch your favorite TV program? An hour. And how long did um, your favorite Stevie Wonder song last? An hour, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Lisa's parents say that she was taught how to count in school and learned about the hours in a day but her brain has never retained that knowledge. But Professor Levitin says there's something going on in Lisa's brain that has preserved time and memory in a musical sense. She's committed words of songs to memory and remembers the musical key and tempo. I just called to say I love you. After a Williams syndrome person dies, um, uh, an examination of the brain reveals a lot about the structure of the brain and what we know from the few brains that we've been able to examine that way is that um, they have some structural features that are quite different from a typically developing normal brain there are, are far fewer folds uh, if you you know a typical brain is is really a crumpled mass of folds and peaks and valleys it looks a lot like a, a prune uh, and they have far fewer folds in their brain and the um, uh, layers of the cortex seem to be structured differently. One part of the brain that seems to be structured differently is the cerebellar vermis located in the cerebellum. Some of it is smaller, some of it larger than normal. This is a key area in Levitin's studies. So one possibility, although we don't know for sure, is that their brains uh, are built differently and maybe even wired differently. We're just beginning to do functional uh, studies where we bring them into the brain scanner and we try to figure out which areas of the brain are active during certain cognitive processes. And this will help us to understand better whether they use their auditory cortex in the same way we do. Uh, do, they, do they have other centers of motor control outside the, what we think of as the normal motor cortex? Those preliminary brain scans show some intriguing results. Dr. Levitin and his colleagues wanted to know what was going on in Williams syndrome brains when subjects listened to familiar music. The scans of these two people show brain activity taking place in that differently structured area called the cerebellar vermis. Scientists believe this region of the brain is the gateway to emotion and that it has strong connections throughout the entire brain. In the same study of normal brains, there was no activation in the cerebellar vermis only a slight bit of activation in the frontal lobe, a region associated with memory. 
The connection with music in the brain's emotional center in Williams syndrome may explain why these individuals are so passionate about music.